friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. Welcome to this week's episode of Christ in Crafting. I'm really excited about what we're going to be talking about today, which is the refining of silver. I'm also super excited about the projects that we'll be doing today. So here's a little sneak peek a couple of steps ahead. It's a beautiful little pin cushion in a... Um, silver plated uh, creamer and this is one I did a long time ago in a little jar so that's where we're headed it's gonna be really fun and then we're gonna I'm gonna read this um, this story called the refiners uh, silver so it should be really good as you are hopping on say hello let me know where you're watching from feel free to sprinkle all that good stuff okay there are three different ways that you can do this project there's probably a ton more this one right here I'll get some close-up pictures because it's it really is so precious and it was so easy it is made uh, using painters drop cloth okay this is ever built drop cloth. It's a great color. This is kind of oatmeal-y, nubby color. Uh, it came from Home Depot. Um, you can get all different sizes, but this is medium duty, ever built painter's drop cloth from Home Depot. I washed it and dried it and washed it and dried it twice. And that's how you get this really soft texture. So that's one way. And that was this. Another way is using canvas. Uh, canvas deck fabric. This is a white canvas deck fabric, but this one is the one that I normally use, which is kind of a creamy ivory color. So you can use either one of these. And canvas deck comes from a fabric store. It's just a real thick canvas. Do not wash it. Um, okay, and then the other thing you can do, I cannot find my package of this, but this is quilt batting. And it just has a great texture to it. So you can also do it with quilt batting. So those are the three ways we're gonna do it. And then you can build these in a lot of different things. Of course, I think personally, if you have a silver or silver plated tea set that is meaningful to you, maybe it was your mother's or grandmother's or something, and it's just sitting in a china closet or underneath the cabinet, pull out the sugar and creamer and make something special with that that you can look at frequently because we're not permanently altering anything here. This will come right out, okay? Um, so use, if you have something special, I say use it. Um, but in addition to that, you could make it in one of these little silver cups. This was my dad's. It says Holland. That's what his name was. And it's very tarnished, but I like the look of that. This is like a little compote dish that is that uh, mercury glass look. This was part of a sugar and creamer that was my mother's. And nothing here is like solid silver. <laughs> it's just, and then this was something I picked up. It's missing one of its handles, but that's the perfect kind of a project to do something like this on the, you could use the bottom of something like this. And you can find little silver pieces at thrift stores, garage sales, look underneath your cabinets, ask your mom, your sister, your aunt, your BFF, your next door neighbor, um, that kind of thing. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. I think we're going to start with this one. All right, so what we're going to need is a piece of either the canvas duck the painter's drop cloth or the um, quilt batting. And this is a piece of canvas duck that I've been fiddling around with to get my size right, okay? And what I'm gonna do, I did iron it, now it's a wrinkled mess. And I'm using some of this. This is Polyfill Crafter's Choice Dry Polyester Packing Fiber Fill, 20 ounces. And it says ideal for doll making. It's pretty stiff. This came from Walmart. And I think the stiffer, the better for this project. So I'm just going to grab a whole bunch of it. We'll see how much we need. You want to fill your um, little poof 
pretty full. And as I've been working on this project for the last couple of days, I started out sewing it, and then I realized, you don't have to do that. It does not need to be sewn. A rubber band works just fine. So, um, so you're gonna put, you know, a big amount. We can come back and take some of this out. A good, generous amount of polyfill in your square. Let me tell you what size this is. Um, this is gonna be too big because I already tried it once, but it's, it's about 13 inches by 13 inches. So ideally, probably, depending on how big the thing is you're putting it in, smaller than that. Okay, and I'm just gonna start gathering two sides, two little corners, and then I'm gonna start pulling and um, kinda gathering it around the edges. This is one of those uh, projects where I wish I had three hands. <laughs> okay, so I'm just starting. And because we're not sewing it, what, what I did with the first ones, I'll show you. Um, I sewed a circle. I did a, um, a running stitch, and then I just cinched it up. And then I realized, oh, I could do the same thing with a rubber band, and it's not going to be visible. It's just going to be tucked inside. So here's my little poof. And if there's some spots where it's, you know, not the shape that you want, you can pull that in tighter. Okay, so I'm just going to use a rubber band. So I'm wondering how many of you guys have heard the refiner's, uh, let's see, the refiner's silver. I'm going to read it to you. It's beautiful. I've heard several variations of this. And it's, it's a comparison of a silver refiner to God and how he refines us through the heat of our lives. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let me see, is it even close to what would fit? Yes, it is, but I've got way too much fabric here. So I'm just going to trim some of this off. What do you guys think so far? If you've just hopped on, this is where we're going. And I'm going to show you how to do this uh, with three different kinds of fabric for your poof. Okay. I'm just going to cut off the big pieces. And grab one more rubber band to try to get it a little bit tighter. And it, it does not matter what color the rubber band is because this is going to be completely hidden. So see this, oh, it's still too big. This is too big. Okay, what we're gonna have to do, would it work for this? I think it's too small for this one. Drats, okay, let's open it up and take some of this stuff and fluff out. I'm just gonna cut my rubber bands. Well, we'll see if that could possibly work. This dish here my, from my mom, 
it doesn't have, have as deep of a well as this little creamer dish does. And you know what? I remember that, that this creamer because I got married a long time ago. <laughs> and in, when, at about the time I got married, we, we received a couple of silver, silver plated tea services. I don't know if people even give those anymore. Um, it's been sitting in my china closet for a super long time. Drats, that's still too big. Well, I might be able to make that work. I think I will. I'm going to make this work. Okay, and I'm going to cut some more of this off, because that's what the hang-up is here. Okay, and then you just want all kinds of different little doodads to decorate it up, like um, this is a box, a sweet box of different doilies and things that was given to me a few years ago by... Sharon Hewitt, and um, she wrote me this sweet card and sent me this box of all these fabulous little doilies, um, which I treasure. Oh my goodness. So you could use some of that kind of stuff. I have some smaller ones pulled out that we may possibly use. And then I have some really teeny little ones uh, pulled out that we might possibly use. You can use any kind of lace that you would like. Most of that's from Dollar Tree. Um, I bought these little things at Hobby Lobby. This is a little pick from Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. Um, and then these are the pretty little pins that I love. These came from Hobby Lobby also. So see, that's gonna work. And that is not permanently glued in there. So, yeah, okay. So I could start this project with the doily on top, or this one. That could be pretty. But I think the, the style that I like the best is this style that has a, um, a lace bow, a lace messy bow, with some little doilies in the center, and some a button, and then lace around the edge. And so I'm going to kind of just do them all about that same way. Okay, so then the first thing I want to do is do the lace around the edge. And this, um, this is Dollar Tree lace. How long do I need that to be? So we'll do that first. And I'm going to start and end where the little um, handle is. So I'm not gluing this to the silver. I'm gluing it to my little poof. Can you see? Getting started. I'm going to turn on the fan in here because it is heating up. You guys, my lights, <laughs> I have three lamps, overhead lights, um, two big square rectangle lights, and then this ring light, and it gets hot in here. Uh, it really does. I think that just quite yet. Okay, so I'm gonna just barely tack this down. And I'm not gluing it to my piece of silver. So if you missed the beginning or the start-ish, I was talking about how if you have some of these little pieces that maybe have a sentimental uh, value to you, I encourage you to use those, you know? Um, Live with it, enjoy it. Don't tuck it away for a rainy day or for the perfect occasion. Um, and if you like to do craft projects or sew or anything, I always.
always need uh, pins. And so this is what I have been using. This was another craft project that we did. It's an embroidery hoop that we stuffed and put some, some of this cork on the bottom, and I stenciled it. I made that a long time ago, but I'm going to use these in here. Okay, so the excess. This lace right here is Dollar Tree lace, so it doesn't have to be vintage or expensive or anything. what I've got so far. Alright, and then let's make a little lace crisscross thing. I'm just trying to decide how big do I want it to be. This I think is also either a piece of lace from uh, Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby. So I'm just going to do a crisscross, and then we can use some of this and do another crisscross, but let's do something bigger first. Okay, I have some of this, um, that's not what I'm looking for. I had some grow grain in here, I thought, maybe not. There's so many things that I could use, it's hard to decide. Um, let's use, where are my piles of ribbon? Let's use this one because it's wider and I'm alternating uh, creamish with, um, with white. So who wants to make one of these? Oh, okay, so Deb says Hobby Lobby. She saw some of this at Hobby Lobby the other day. Yeah, this is Merchant 41, which is that Hobby Lobby brand. And it's called Crochet Scallop Trim. Okay, so I'm just doing three pieces. Okay, and then I'm going to just take a piece of something to tie, it'll be covered up, to tie the center of my messy bow. We can trim it if it's way too big. You could use any kind of buttons that you want, any kind of ribbon, lace, um, torn strips of silk, strips of uh, your canvas duck or your Just a little messy bow. And then I'm going to use two little pieces of a doily. And this is still connected to the piece next to it. You just do a little snip and it will come right apart. So I'll glue that on there. And then let's use a white. Here's a little teeny tiny white doily. Let's use one that's a little bit smaller. Just that one. And 
and let's find um, a button. This is my collection, part of my collection of vintage mother of pearl buttons. This is like one of my favorite things. I want to have some kind of fancier card blends. It's too big. What do you guys think so far? Can you believe how super easy this is? That's too big also. Great gift idea for a sewer. I think so too. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, if you have, you know, your parents, oh, here's a pretty little one. Your parents are still living or your, your aunts or whatnot, and they have some heirloom any kind of little vintage silver pieces, I think that it would be so sweet to make some of these for people in your family. Okay, so, and I'm gonna put it kind of to the side, and I can already see that some of these are too long, so let's just trim this just a little bit. And I'm just going to glue this onto my little poof, and then I'll pull it out and show you what we've got. Tack a little bit of this lace down. Just gluing it to the poof, not to the silver piece. Add some pins. These are from Hobby Lobby, by the way. And they're not with the sewing. They were with the wedding section. Because I've been looking for this kind of a pin for a while. I would love to find some even longer ones. Um, and I could have added some of these little doodads in there, or a flower. What do you guys think? What do we think? Would you be thrilled to receive something like this? I would. Somebody um, was telling me earlier today that they were excited to watch this Christ and Crafting today because they went to um, Goodwill and they found uh, a little silver piece that they wanted to use. So I think that's really sweet. Okay, let's try one more. Let's do it in this little silver compote. And let's do it using, this is um, cotton batting. What I love about this cotton batting is that it has flecks of darker colors in it. And it's got a really nice texture. If you are a messy crafter like me, you can see already how great this project is. Carol says she loves it. Paula says she loves it. Phyllis just joined. Um, Phyllis, yeah, when I'm all finished, when I'm not live here anymore, when you don't see this little red live button, um, watch the replay. And stay for Christ in Crafting. It's going to be really good. You're going to love this uh, story I'm going to read. And it's going to be short and sweet. How much proof do I need for that? That might be enough. 
such a big piece of batting, but it's hard to know. Is that going to be big enough? No, it's not. Okay, so I'm just starting at like two corners and cinching it in. Okay, like that. And then I'm going to start just gathering and pulling it in. Oh, I should find a rubber band before I get too far along. What's this one? It's nice and thick. So if you're watching this live, you could use a clear type cup. Yeah, but then the bottom would be visible. That's the only thing. Um, the underneath and it's kind of messy looking anyways if you're watching this live on June 11th 2023 today you guys I can't believe this today is my oldest son's 27th birthday I'm like how is that even possible time is just flying by so fast I want it to stop or at least to slow down um, anyways, we are, we have some fun plans for dinner with, um, our family and with, uh, his wife's family. Okay, let's see. That could work, but I need to cut a good bit of this off. So when I'm all finished, I will get close-up pictures, and then I want to know from you, which style do you like the best? Do you like the one with painter's drop cloth? Which I did exactly the same as this. We're not going to do it again. Um, do you like the one with canvas duck? Or do you like this one with quilt batting? one you might actually have to glue in to get it to stay down because we'll cut this shorter. Let me do another rubber band and then we'll try to cut it shorter. <laughs> Somebody just said that their oldest just turned 40 and she was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Uh, that happened quickly. I always hated it when people told me to enjoy every moment because the days are long, but the, but the years are short. I just thought, what even does that mean? And now I know. Those days were hard. Um, they were definitely hard. And I thought some of those days would never end. I was hurrying for them to be able to do their own seat belts and <sighs> all that kind of stuff. And now I wish I could go back to some of it. Okay, so that's going to work just fine in this little compote. And I'm just going to do the same thing, basically. Um, I'm looking at what do I have here that I can use. We could use some of this lace to make a cute little bow. here. Okay, let's do some of that. Um, let's do some of this. Let's do some of this one. Might be the end of the roll. Honestly, 
your possibilities are out so endless what, what you can do, what style you can create. Um, I'm just going with this little formula, and what I'm switching up is what the little poof is made of. As soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to show you what the poof looks like from the underneath. This project for today is such a God thing. It just, it always... Um, it's just always so cool. Every week when I'm thinking about what I'm going to do on Sunday, I'm doing a new live one, I start to get a little panicked. <laughs> and um, I was looking through some old photos on my iPad, and I saw all these pretty pictures of silver of these little silver um, pin cushions. Turn this down just a little bit, it's way long. And that made me think about this refiner's, uh, this story that's so beautiful. And then everything just all kind of came together and I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. It's gonna be a good one. Okay off here. Let's tuck in a couple little pieces of um, flowers. Okay, let's do this one. So a good place to find like vintage lace and that kind of thing are antique malls or antique festivals or fairs, that kind of thing. I've come across a lot of that stuff at those kind of places. All right, and I'm just going to Cut a couple little pieces off of my, these are so pretty. This is such a neutral little flower. Pop it in right here. It needs to be shorter. Did I lose part of it? Yes, I did. Look how sweet that is. Let me just quick grab the button. This won't bite. Let's use this one that still has some of the thread on it. I love these buttons because I know that this button, some lady, probably a hundred years ago, was being resourceful and when a garment was worn out, they would cut the buttons off and save the buttons to use for something in the future. And anyways. Those buttons are more special, I think. 
Okay, so here's what we have. And then I do think I'll also do that lace just the same. Although, you know what, it really doesn't need it. Does it? What do you guys think? Does it need the lace around the side? Well, we can do that in two seconds. That's easy. I'm using my low temperature hot gluing device, and I tell you that right now because this um, quilt batting, when it has hot glue on it, it gets very hot, um, very, very hot. So if you had a high temperature hot gluing device that you were using on this project and you got some hot glue combined with this uh, quilt batting on your fingers, you could end up with a serious burn. So definitely be using a low temperature. Oh my gosh, these have turned out so cute. Do you like this project? Um, I got up two other things here that I wanted to show you just for fun. I love making things like this. Um, and so I want to show you my crochet hook little pouch. And I want to show you my needle book. Okay, here it is. Let's, we could put this literally anywhere we wanted, but I like them the best kind of uh, low and to the side. That might, uh, might need to be a little bit smaller, but let's add some pins. What do you think? So easy. Okay, so if you missed any of this video when I'm finished, when it's not live anymore, come back and you can watch the replay. But let me get everything scooped over here. Um, but I want to show you the underneath so that you know that it um, it doesn't have to look neat underneath. It really doesn't. So here's the underneath of this one. And I just used a rubber band to cinch that up. Here's the underneath of the one that I did actually sew. And then I put a rubber band on it. And this one has a deeper well, so I didn't have to trim any of that, that um, tail off. And then here's this one, and here's what the underneath of it looks like. So I just need to squinch it back in there. And if you knew for sure that you wanted your pin cushion to be there forever, you could just do some glue and make it completely permanent. Anyways, I hope you liked these. I am in love with this idea. Um, I think it turned out absolutely adorable. I'm just going to make a little bit of room here so I can get my Bible out. And I want to show you these. Um, this is my needle book. If anyone wants this video or a video where I did do a more recent video where I made needle books, this is just felt. And I put a little pocket here to put my plastic needles and some buttons, of course. And this is my, crochet, my little crochet pouch. And 
it's got the crochet hooks in it. So there's so many sweet things that you can do that aren't super complicated, don't take a long time to assemble, and um, that are sweet. All right. Oh, and I have this one too. And you can't see any of those. I'm so sorry. I will get some good pictures when I'm all finished here. So, okay. about this story that is called The Refiner's Fire. And um, I have heard this, and you probably have too, as a, um, a way to explain how God refines us. Let me pull my head down a little bit so I don't feel so far away. That's a little better. Okay. Um, so let me just read this to you, then we'll go into the Bible briefly, and then I'll sum it up, and we'll be done for today. Okay, the refiner's fire paints such a beautiful picture of how God refines us. You might have heard of a version of this story before about the woman who goes to a silversmith to watch the process of refining silver. Okay, here it is. As she watched the silversmith, he held a piece of silver over the fire and let it heat up. He explained that in refining silver, one needed to hold the silver in the middle of the fire where the flames were the hottest, as to burn away all impurities. The woman thought about God holding each one of us in such a hot spot. Then she thought about the verse in the Bible that says, He sits as a refiner and purifier of silver, and that's in Malachi 3.3. She asked the silversmith if it was true that he had to sit there in front of the fire the whole time the silver was being refined. The man answered yes. Not only he had, he not only had to sit there holding the silver, but he had to keep his eyes on the silver the entire time it was in the fire. If the silver was left a moment too long in the flames, it would be destroyed. The woman was silent for a moment. Then she asked the silversmith, How do you know, this really gets me, how do you know when the silver is fully refined? He smiled and answered, Oh, that's easy. When I see my image in the silver, when I see my reflection. And that's, that's such a good way of explaining uh, how God refines us and that he holds us sometimes in the spot where the flames are the hottest but he doesn't leave us or forsake us and he keeps his eyes on us the whole entire time so we are not left in the hot flames too long so long that we would be destroyed and um he knows when we are fully refined, when he can see his image in us, when we are a reflection of him. And silver has to be refined. It, the impurities have to be burned away. And it, that's painful, <laughs> but it's the truth with us too. Um, I don't want to be refined. I want to just start out being perfect, but unfortunately, that's not how it is. And, um, and so he is always at work refining us, developing us, growing us, maturing us into his image. And that's just so beautiful. Um, so let's go into Malachi three, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. And here it says, See... Wait, is it one, two, three? See, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. That's John the Baptist. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. 
The messenger of the covenant, covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. And um, in my notes, I have a life application study Bible that's oh, it's in such bad shape. I need to get it rebound. Um, but I've written my life in it. It's my most valuable earthly possession. Um, and it has my life and my thoughts and my relationship with God written in here. And um, it's New International Version. So I want to read the notes. These are so helpful. Okay, in the process of refining metals, the raw metal is heated with fire until it melts. The impurities separate from it and rise to the surface. They are skimmed off, leaving the pure metal. Without this heating and melting, there could be no purifying. As the impurities are skimmed off the top, the reflection of the worker appears in the smooth, pure surface. As we are purified by God, his reflection in our lives will become more and more clear to those around us. Uh, isn't that just amazing? And then um, I also want to go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29. Okay, I'm going to start at 28, but this is, um, this is the Apostle Paul talking to the Hebrews about um, rejecting God or refusing God, okay? It says, he says, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, sh shaken that's our eternal life, um, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. And he really is. But he's a loving father. Um, he knit you together in your mother's womb. Your name, if you, if you are a Christ follower, if you have put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and stopped trusting on your own self, <laughs> um, then your name is engraved in the palm of his hand. Uh, your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. The Holy Spirit comes to reside in you. And he will never leave you or forsake you because he is a good God with good plans for us, plans to prosper us, not to harm us, plans to give us a hope and a future. And part of the process of getting there is to be refined. And refining is, it's painful at the moment. <laughs> but after, it's like, um, it's like when you're um, correcting a child. That's painful at the moment, but after it produces a better compliance and attitude of the, of the child, and we are the children here, um, purification, refining, being held in the flames of life, um, that can be painful too. But in the end, it's good because we are made, all the impurities are skimmed off the top, and we are made more into God's image, and the outside world looking at us will see our Heavenly Father, which is just amazing. So if you decide to make any of these little silver uh, pin cushions, I hope that when you look at them, that you will think about um, this story, The Refiner's Fire. And I think I'm going to, this is all over the internet and all over Google, by the way. You can Google it. There's different, slightly different versions. I could not find an author or original source. So I don't know who that is or how long this story has been around. So I feel fine sharing this. If you would like 
a copy of this. Just let me know in the comments and I'll cut and paste it in a comment. I'm also going to post it here on DIY Dream with some pictures of our project. Um, so again, we used vintage, a vintage compote dish, uh, some vintage silver pieces. We used either quilt batting, canvas duck, or um, painter's drop cloth. We used a variety of um, laces and buttons and little doodads and some um, polyfill, and that's it. Nothing is permanent unless you want to make it permanent, and then you could just put a whole bunch of black, hot glue inside of it. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. I've been excited all day to get started. I just wanted to have a few samples ready to show you before before I got started. So let me um, let me pray us out. Did I forget to pray us in? I think I did. Oh, Heavenly Father, I'm so sorry that I forgot to pray to you before before we approached you, before we started talking about your holy word, Lord. Um, in my excitement to get to this refiner spire story, I I just overlooked that, so I apologize. Um, but Lord, I thank you so much that you are our refiner, that you keep your eyes on us and you are present the whole time we are going through the refining process and the whole time that you are rising the impurities in our lives up to the surface and then taking them away. I praise you that you never leave us or forsake us, that you are there, that you will not keep us in the fire of life one second more than what you have deemed is necessary. Um, Lord, you are just such a good God. And it is just so comforting to know that you know each one of us individually. You created each one of us. You know how many hairs we have on our head, how many days we have for our lives here on earth. And you want an intimate relationship with each one of us, Lord. Um, you know what our impurities are. And you know what it's going to take to bring those up to the top of the surface so that they can be skimmed away so that we can be made more into your image. So I just praise you for that, Lord. And for the people who are going through the refining process, we all are in, in different ways and different uh, degrees. But for the people going through hard things, heartbreaks, heartaches, health scares, um, hurts, concerns about loved ones, I just pray that this week you will help them to feel you because you are always there. It's just us that gets busy, gets focused on something, and we, we forget to seek you, Lord. So just hold those people near to you. Let them feel your love and your presence this week. And be with all of us. Lord, I pray that this message was an encouragement to people. And that if they decide to do this project, that it will be a blessing to them and that it will be a blessing to someone else if they're making it as a gift. And I just pray all this in the precious name of your amazing son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you saw seriously how easy these are to make. And I really hope that you will try doing something like this. And if you're doing it as a gift for someone, it would be really special, I think, to give them this story as well. Uh, so thanks for joining me. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, sprinkle, 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 if you would like. If you have friends going through things, friends, family, connections, whatnot, that you think this would be helpful for them, feel free to tell them about DIY Dreaming or just um, share this uh, video to your Facebook page or whatever social media you're on. Um, have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you this upcoming week for lots more craft projects. 
that are going to be quick and easy uh, because I have a very short attention span. That's why I don't do furniture. <laughs> it just takes way too long. I need my projects to be doable in under an hour and a half at the most. They're going to be quick and easy. They're sometimes going to be a little different, like doing this. They're going to be affordable. Um, and most of the time, they're going to involve either faith, family, or flowers. So thank you for joining me, friends. And I will see you later. Be blessed. Bye.